Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel. As promised in the previous video, we are right back on the chicken coop slash goat barn. The turkeys are pretty excited about it this morning as well. So is their doggo. And the ducks. They act like they like me. They act like they're friendly, but then they do things like this. Remember in the previous video, we worked on all these batten strips, but then the turkeys decided to knock a few of them off. So let's get these re-straightened up. What I want to do starting out is uh, go ahead and get one more coat on the back and sides of these, and then we can get them installed. And we'll just face paint them once they're actually on the barn. Yes, I see you. We all see you. By the way, a lot of people have been asking about updates on t-shirts. I've done a few updates in some of the videos, but in case you missed those updates, I'd say the first half of t-shirts are in and we are in the process of getting things shipped out now. If you ordered like in the first two or three weeks, you'll probably have your shirts in the next couple weeks. And uh, if you ordered after that, you know, it'll probably be another long time. Okay, so there's your update. I do appreciate your patience. We're not a shirt company. That takes us a little longer to get that stuff out. Went in, had some lunch, and believe it or not, with the sun and the breeze today, they're actually all dry enough to the touch. So let's go ahead and see if we can't uh, get those up on there okay. Just take one down and see how we feel. Give her a test run. Okay. Y'all need more slides in your life. I don't even know who you are or what you got slide-wise, but you need more of them. I promise you. All right, so remember that is paint on the back. And the whole reason I wanted to paint the back is because there is gonna be a chance for quite a bit of moisture to get back in there a little bit or trapped in there. So I just kinda wanna protect it as much as possible. And now that they're on the front, we can go ahead and slap them up and I can just roll them right in place. But that, uh, I think that's gonna work. So I'm just starting with these little two inch screws and uh, I'm gonna, Hold it just enough that it covers the crack on one side, but kind of favor it to the other side. That way I can keep the screw more centered in this batten strip. If I put them close to the edge over time, it's gonna shrink and want to split that out. I don't want to do that. I just want to be able to cover the crack and still keep some good meat in there. And then I'm gonna stay down a little bit if I same thing, keep it up here close to that end, it's gonna to wanna to split out more. So we'll stay down just a little ways. Had to rough it up a little bit, I don't think it was like roughed up. So you skin it where you want them to peck, and then they peck the pumpkin until there's a hole there. So they like carve the pumpkin. <laughs> She's getting so big. Oh, not my diamond ring. She's a good baby. She's a good baby. Look at her. Don't you eat my diamond ring. I'll keep you posted on the turkey pumpkin carving project. There's the batten strips on that one. Let's see if we can get this side done. So far they're not fitting too bad. And this is all kind of, you know, fairly green, so I'm sure it'll shrink up a little bit, which isn't gonna hurt anything at all. That's how we're looking there. Let's go ahead and run these all the way down the back. The backs are gonna do a little bit differently though because I've got better access to purlins here. I got one purlin I can hit there and one I can hit right at that row of nails. So I'm gonna take a four inch screw, run through the batten strip, right in the crack, not hit either board, and then hit that purlin. And that'll really pull it tight to there and keep it independent of those boards, whatever they decide they wanna do. We might still have to 
slap one in one of the edges down here to keep it from twisting on us. We'll try. We'll see what happens. Got you on the old ladder cam here. It's been a while since we've broken out the ladder cam, but figured today would be a good day for it. Get that time lapse down the backside. Of course, then you gotta drag it back up the hill, but it's just, you gotta get the good shots, you know? Here's how it turned out though. It looks good. Four inch screw between two boards there and on that row there. And then I am gonna go down. You can see the bottom. Some of these are kind of kicked out. I can't there. I'll go down with those little two inch screws and just kind of Try to tack them in place, keep that bottom from warping out over time. Really seals it up on the inside though. I mean, you see, that's the white from the boards. That's not daylight. That's the white from the paint we put on. Very nice. And we had some pretty big gaps, especially like between these two. Huh? What do you think? So the next step is actually pour a little bit of concrete. Just those two bags right there. We're doing a little pad right here. There's gonna be two little goat stalls, which means there's gonna be another divider wall that comes to a post. That post needs something to sit on so we can tie it in up top. So this doesn't have to be perfect anything. Like I said, it's just a seat for a post. Hopefully one day we can pour this whole floor, which should be really nice. We're just gonna center it up between these two. They are 112. And after a little math break, should be 56 center to center, however you wanna say it. That'll do her. I bet I had, well I know I did because I bought them. I had 20 concrete stakes a year ago. And I think I'm down to one concrete stake left. They just got a way of walking off. That's okay. It's really not though. So that shows level from the top of this to the top of that works for me I'm not, and I want to put just a little rebar in it we're not getting carried away we're just going to do a an X right here kind of thing you know just like that oh beautiful bud beautiful whenever we built this house one thing I really wanted and I'm glad we did it is we put a hot water spigot outside I was kind of thinking more for like washing cars and things like that, but it turns out I'm not really into washing cars all that much. But what I do use it for is uh, little concrete jobs like this when it's kind of chilly outside. Oh yeah, there's some good warm water.
We're not really doing any extensive concrete work today, but a few people were asking last time the difference between a steel trowel and a mag float. Uh, left side here with the label on it. It's rusty, that's a steel trowel. The one on the right side here, that's a mag float. It's called a mag float, short for magnesium. You also see guys, a lot of old school guys will still run wood handle floats. It's the first tool on the concrete after you pour. And the main purpose for it is just to get the aggregate knocked down and a little bit of cream work to the top so you get a good smooth finish. The nice thing is early on, and this is just a little bitty thing, and it's winter time, but if you make a big mistake with it, it's not a huge deal. You're still pretty early in the game and you got a little bit of time to, time to fix it. Of course, being that it's pretty cold outside also helps with that. The cold temperature gives us a little bit more time and the fact that it's only the size of a medium pizza also helps that we have a lot of time with it. I got a few of these left and just a touch of daylight. Let's see if we can't piece that door in. So it's a couple days later, we're getting ready to go throw some pa paint on those batten strips. Here's the artwork though. Huh? Did they do a good job? Look at it. It's something. I don't know what, but it is something. Somebody's asking about this feeder. We did it this way. I don't want to say we travel a lot, but we go on a lot of campouts. We go on a lot of weekend trips. Things like that, so we tried to set it up in a way that we can walk away from this for a little bit of time and not have to have somebody come out and feed our birds. So it's just kind of like a bulk feeder. And then we can just dump whole bags in. It'll hold two full bags. These are 40 pound bags, so it'll hold 80 pounds worth of food. It's, a, it's in the, it's in there. Now we've just got three of those little feeders on there right now. But we've got room and we've actually got them. We may go ahead and add a, a fourth or fifth one around that side. By the time this thing was ready for a steel trowel, it was dark and I just hit it once. That'd be good enough for what it is. We'll get this stripped off in a little bit. Oh yeah, good mix job, Mike. See, the chunks are how you know you got it mixed together. So I just have a, an old drywall knife that I cleaned off really well last time I used it. And we're just gonna, you know, you just kind of shove that there. You're good to go. I know some people are wondering about the backhoe project. I've got quite a few parts in, which is good and exciting. Uh, I have been talking to Area Diesel Service a little bit about the uh, pump on that. So we may be working with them on something yet. Nothing's confirmed, but hoping we get the opportunity to work with them on that pump. I've got the starter back from the guy I took it to to get it rebuilt. So we're good there. What? First coat of paint on the batten strips. Looks great. 
Let's work on this wall in here. Excuse me, ladies. Excuse me. Excuse me. So this is a fence post, obviously. It's what I got laying around. I needed a post. I've got a post, it's what I'm using. Now some people will say I can't use a fence post as a structural timber, but here's my thoughts on it. So hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> Next step is I need to, because it's not gonna be right on this post, it's gonna be just left of a little bit, I need to build the section where it's going to tie into. So that should give us enough to tie onto. I'm just going to cut them the same length as this. We'll throw them up there with a the level and then we can trim them as we need to. 74, 76. We got a whole bunch of just off fall pieces in here I've been saving for little random things. We're gonna to try to use up as much of those as possible on this section. So we got that finished up. Looks pretty good. It's off the ground a ways, because remember at some point we plan on putting some concrete in here. That gives us two little stalls or whatever we'd like to put in there. A couple goats, an emu maybe. I, things get crazy in Indiana. Uh, I might, I think I'm gonna slide these over in a second and kind of see how we need to cut those up to make them work there. But the next thing I'd like to do is build the roosting poles over here on this side. The idea is pretty simple. We just want a big, you know, bunch of roosting poles here, but we're gonna put them on hinges with ropes and pulleys so we can lift it up out of the way. Whenever we come in here to muck this thing out and clean it out, we don't want to be cleaning around these roosting poles. Well, that's the idea. We're just going to reuse some of that scrap poplar pieces we ripped off. And I've got some off cuts of that treated two by four from when we were working up there. This should work for the side pieces. We're not going to get fancy, just going to keep it functional. The other thing we got to take into consideration is that when this is folded down, it doesn't hit that gate and keep us from getting in here. We're just gonna go like every 12, I think. Yeah, you can slide down a little bit. Mm -hmm. I tried to. Ready, one, two, three, here we go. Beautiful. Mm. One, two, three. It's just roosting poles. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just, you know, some room for them to hop up here and roost at night. And then when we clean it, it folds up nice out of the way. Probably could honestly, a fella could just put a little latch right there, you know, a little eyelet type latch. And just hold it up out of the way whenever we want to clean under here. Easy peasy. Tell me, tell me what you think. There's your feet. You're on it. You gotta put your... There you go. There you go. What are you trying to do? 
Well, I'm saying if she likes it. You got it? What do you think? <laughs> right, I'll turn around. And uh, we're golden there. No issues at all. Of course, when we get the concrete, they'll lift a little higher. We'll just have to trim the bottoms off. Won't be that too. Won't, won't be that too big of a that deal. But this is just in my way and kind of a pain in the butt. And we should be able to go ahead and put that on. So let's see if we can real fast. So we got this piece of rake trim right along this edge we got to do. And we've got this little, little return into here that we've got to get knocked out. We'll cut that square and then I'll come over. Give me a little bit there to work with. I gotta make a little bit of a notch here, but I'll show you in a second. Let me just, I couldn't find my new snips either. I'm using my old snips and I, they're better to fall apart on me. So I should be able to make that bend. Doesn't look awful. Now I gotta notch that so it lays flat into that. We just cut right along here and then catch it in here. There we go. That's our 90 there. Pretty decent. So now it's just a whole bunch of kind of test fitting and making adjustments. Slides in there but I need to make a cut so we can get this to bend up a little bit. So whenever we put this piece of siding back on, like this, covers it. No! Oh, you guys just did a dosey -si do on the magnet and I don't know how you didn't fall. That was amazing. Slide in here, a little persuasion. There we go. A little tight on the bottom, pretty tight there. Pretty tight there. Yeah, I feel good all the way around. metal the metal comes up behind it so anything should come on there and come down this way instead of getting down behind it and then whenever we get our break or where we do with our flashing here and we come over the top of that that flashing will come over down like that and then that corner piece of wood will go on over the metal so that should have us pretty good on the corner that cleaned up okay she's a little loosey-goosey if a fella wanted a pop rivet would go a long way but a fella really doesn't want to and that's what it looks like from the bottom makes a pretty clean little 90 I just kind of cut that how I needed to. Keep in mind, I don't have a batten strip or something there. And some people were talking about this, and I don't plan on putting any batten strips on this until I have the track on and installed. I don't want to work the batten strips around the track and end up putting stuff in my way. I want to get the track and everything on first before we do that. And that's how we turned out on this side. Not too bad. Of course, to keep my stuff, face should have tuck up in there. We bought these doors used a while back. And they kind of got us good when they did it. I didn't pay a whole lot of attention. We threw them on the trailer quick. I thought these hinges are awesome. And you know, it's not, it's just a regular door hinge and they actually cut the cool hardware off. So that's kind of a bummer. How you doing everybody? So that's kind of a bummer, but they're still pretty cool. And we still want to use them for the bottom half of the goat doors. The top half at some point, We'll put some kind of fencing in here. We're just, we're all about the airflow. We want to keep the ventilation good in here. I'll just, I'll just cut it and then you'll see. Then, you know, then we don't have to talk about it. We can just look at it. We can say, wow, that's great. It's things like that. Honestly, the best way to remove flathead screws is with a hammer. The latch and the little sleeves are these little Whatever you want to call them. Those are pretty cool. We are worth keeping. And then cut her from the other side, wouldn't it? Hold on now. That was unexpected. 
Those screws are pulling and holding pretty good, which makes me optimistic about saving that wood. And then I think if we put a little cap on it like that, these boards are exposed, a little cap on it, something to run the fence off of in the future. Let me uh, be right about like that. So to help visualize. Of course, paint it up. Boy, she'd have to be some heavy hinges though. It's a heavy door. Could always do a cable hinge, do some strap hinges down there, and then a cable hinge off an eyelet on the top too to help this side with the uh, turnbuckle in the middle. Now to support it. It would be a really good look though. I think it's worth doing. Kind of just wanted to try it out and see how it's going to work. Flop this up out of the way for now. A little bit more progress here. Some new roosting poles. I'm just loving how this thing's coming out. Batten strips installed with one coat of paint. Roof trim's finished up. And of course, down the back side. So hopefully at some point in November, we'll have enough money to run some soffit to close that all in. Of course, close that in with soffit as well and then do our windows across there. And we still need to go ahead and get this door on this side built into place at least to block that big hole in the wall. That would be good enough to go ahead and get us through the winter. And then in the spring, we can work on the sliding door hardware. We can work on all the fencing. We can work on the concrete floor. We can work on all of that stuff. But at least at that point, the, the birds would be able to live in the barn during the winter and be out of the elements quite a bit more than what they are now. Yeah, the fall is absolutely gorgeous here. It's hard to beat. Definitely love it here. Definitely love it. Got a land clearing job, a little last minute land clearing job that came up for Dirt Perfect. That'll be the next video, then welding repairs on the C8500, and then possibly a couple other little repairs on the C8500, and then we'll be back on the backhoe, getting everything put back together. We've got a bunch of parts coming in, and even today, after shooting this video, some more parts came in. So we're pretty much ready to start getting everything reassembled on that. And then YouTube yacht really heavy in November. We might get one more barn video in at the end of November, like I said, trying to get some of that other stuff wrapped up. And the Subaru side-by-side -side project, probably sometime at the end of November too. I'd like to get that to the point where I can, you know, run around and drive it and it's ready to go. So that's what we got coming up. Lots of fun stuff. I hope you guys are enjoying the videos. I hope you're enjoying the channel. I hope you're enjoying whatever time of day it is right now. Morning, afternoon, evening. I don't know. That's just whatever. I just, okay. All right. Bye then. Thanks for watching.